Hey, what is up everyone? It's David here. I know you're tired of hearing Do your own research. Sometimes it's not that we don't want to do our own research. The question is, how the <coughs> do you do your own research? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to analyze a balance sheet from a company using ASX dividend stocks as an example. The two dividend stocks I'll be using will be A2Milk and Brickworks. Since financial services and banks balance sheets are really hard to understand, I'll dedicate a full series on that sometime in the future. Also, I'll cover a few key ratios related to the balance sheet. So that towards the end of this video, you should feel pretty comfortable reading a whole balance sheet on yourself. As usual, this video is not financial advice or recommendation for you to do anything. It's just general information for entertainment purposes. So. Without further ado, let's go. So I've structured this video into two main parts. First, I'll go over the balance sheet basics. Then I'll take you into my computer, apply the basics we just learned and analyze A2Milk and Brickworks balance sheet along with two key balance sheet ratios. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section below. The purpose of a balance sheet is really simple. It's essentially an update for investors on the financial health of a company. But the balance sheet is one perspective of the company. To get a holistic view of the entire company, we'll also have to look into the cash flow statement and also the income statement as well. Don't worry, I'll be creating a future video on cash flow statements and also income statements as well. Going back on topic, a balance sheet is broken into three main segments. First, you have the assets, liabilities, and also equity. With assets and liabilities, there will be a current portion versus a non-current portion. The current portion of assets just means that these assets can be turned into cash within 12 months. And a non-current asset just means that it's going to take longer than 12 months to convert that into cash. The current part of liabilities just means that these bills will have to be paid within 12 months. And the non-current part of the liabilities just means that these bills don't have to be paid within 12 months. And for whatever reason, we sell all of our assets to pay down all of our debt what we're left over is equity. So essentially the equity part of the balance sheet is all of the assets we as shareholders are entitled to. After all of the liabilities have been paid. An easy formula to remember is assets minus liabilities equals equity. To wrap up the basics, two key ratios that's most often used with the balance sheet is the current ratio and also the debt to equity ratio. The current ratio is just current assets divided by current liabilities and we're using this ratio to gauge if something were to happen over the next 12 months, can the company fulfill all of its short-term liabilities? Basically, can they pay the bills within 12 months? And then the debt to equity ratio is literally the debt of the company divided by the equity and we'll use this ratio to gauge how risky is the company for shareholders like us. These ratios are best used when comparing companies in a similar industry, but on its own, it still can help us understand where does the company stand. And that's essentially the basics. We're going to jump into my computer and let's look at A2Milk's balance sheet. And the easiest way to find this report is either via the website, asx.com.au or just Google it. What I've found is that for more mature companies, their website is a lot more well-maintained and it's much easier to find. With smaller companies, I tend to come to asx.com.au com.au to get the annual report instead because the website is just so hard to navigate. Now once you've gotten your hands on the annual report, go to the balance sheet or financial position section and I tend to have a book, some kind of notes next to me or an excel sheet just so that I can jot down any note. And the first thing I like to look at is the current ratio of the company because generally speaking I want to gauge how well can the company pay their short-term bills if something were to happen and A2Milk cannot generate income in the short term. So the easiest way to do this is take the total current assets divided by the total current liabilities. To make the calculation easier, it would be 1128 divided by 305 and our current ratio is 3.7, which means that for every $1 of current liabilities, there's almost $4 worth of current assets, which means that if something were to happen, they are absolutely fine. They can pay off all of their bills in the short term and some more. Now, a common question asked when it comes to current ratio is what is a healthy current ratio? And for me, I prefer my current ratio to be above 1.5. And the reason why is that when you have a current ratio of one, that means for every $1 of current liabilities, you only have $1 of current assets. What you're essentially saying is that 
you are expecting that if something were to happen and you sell off all of your current assets, you will get the exact dollar amount on the balance sheet. And we all know that is not going to happen. If you need to sell something really quickly, it's likely there are transaction costs, you might have to sell something at a discount. So life will never really be as expected. So I prefer to have that 0.5, 0.6 buffer just in case that if the company need to liquidate and sell off their current assets, they have a buffer and there's more than enough even if they were to sell things at a discount to cover all of their short-term bills. Now the next thing I like to look at is the debt to equity ratio. And what I'm trying to understand is for every $1 of equity, how much debt is there? When a company gets in trouble, everyone else will get paid first before shareholders like me. So I want to know how safe is my money. And to calculate this ratio, equity is probably the easiest thing to find, which is about a billion dollars. And then we come to the liability section and I'm looking for keywords like uh, debt, borrowings, to see if there's any. Uh, other payables is not debt. This is probably just paying for inventory. Uh, contract liabilities are just bills. Same with lease, uh, that's just tax. And so it doesn't seem like there's any debt for A2 Milk. This balance sheet is really clean. So we're going to look at Brickworks balance sheet in just a second because they do have debt. Now, if there are any line items that are really vague and it doesn't make sense, I generally will go to the notes section to see what's actually inside. A2 Milk's line items are actually pretty straightforward. So I don't think I'll need to do any further digging with the notes. And then the last thing I like to do when it comes to a balance sheet is I like to go through the balance sheet again, but this time I am comparing this year with the previous year and I'm looking for substantial changes. So for example, cash and short-term deposits will be a substantial change. It's almost a 400 million difference and it's probably likely that it's cash flow from operating activities since A2 Milk is a more mature company. If it's a growth company or a smaller company, I really want to know where are they getting the cash from and why aren't they using it? And it seems like A2 Milk is not using it either because that's a lot of cash. And then I basically systematically go through it again just to see if there's anything that stands out. Deferred tax assets could be something else I look into. Trade and other payables. That seems like they are paying for more inventory. Is that right? Inventories, yep. Yep, potentially, yes. Uh, these numbers are too small to actually care about. I'm looking for big, big changes. And income tax payable went down. That means they have paid down some of the short-term tax taxes. And I think that's about it. Yeah, this balance sheet is really clean. So I don't have too many comments on that. So usually the balance sheet gives me a really good feel on the financial position of the company. So let's look at Brickworks balance sheet. Get a better understanding of a company with bit of debt. So the first thing I like to do again with any balance sheet is the current ratio. So to calculate the current ratio, it's just total current assets divided by current liabilities. So let me pull out my calculator. So that's 637 divided by 232 and it's about 2.74. So what that means is that for every $1 of current liabilities, there is almost $3 worth of current assets, which means that they will have no problem if something were to happen in the short term, they'll be able to pay down their bills and some more. And the next thing I look for is the debt to equity ratio. So I come to the liability section. The equity part is easy to find. It's just total equity. So then the next thing I am looking for is any form of borrowings or debt. Okay, so they have $638 million of borrowings derivative financial liability. So generally for an international company, what will happen is the company will buy financial instruments to protect themselves against interest rates or forex rates. A company like Qantas, they might also hedge against oil prices. Since Brickworks have acquired a couple companies overseas, I'm assuming that they have bought some instruments to protect themselves against um, currency changes. But that, in my opinion, is not borrowing. Post-employment liabilities, that's not borrowing. Uh, lease, no. Uh, other financial, could be. Doesn't seem like it, but it could be. So I'll probably dig into the, uh, the notes section, but such a small amount as well. Uh, provisions, probably not. Income tax liability, well, that's just taxes. So it seems like borrowings is the major debt. And if we do a quick calculation and we do 638 divided by 2404, the debt to equity ratio is about 0 0.26. So what that means is that 
for every $1 of equity, there is 26 cents of debt. And from here, if there are any line items that require further clarification, I will go through the notes and just to make sure I have a really good understanding of the balance sheet. Uh, at the same time, you can also go to another tool like Simply Wall Street or Yahoo Finance to double check your debt to equity ratio. But the most accurate numbers tends to be on the annual report. So I'm going to trust my own calculation here. And then again, the last thing I like to do is look for any substantial changes between the two years. And cash is a good example. This could be from operating activities, receivables, that's pretty standard, not too many big changes, current income tax asset. I wonder if that's from acquiring companies in the US, probably is. If I want to, I'll, I'll dig into it a little bit more in the notes section. Um, just trying to see if there's anything else that is big changes, uh, right of use asset, intangible intangible assets are like brand that those kind of things it's not actually real derivative financial instruments okay current income tax okay so they've paid down some of their taxes ato would be happy about that uh lease liabilities so it seems like they have leased i wonder if that's from the acquisition as well and borrowings have changed substantially so i wonder what they are borrowing that money for it's likely that they might have borrowed money to for the acquisitions or scaling up their operations Derivative, no, lease liabilities, okay. So other than borrowings, there doesn't seem to be any major changes that we need to dig into. So even though this is not the most comprehensive way to look at a balance sheet, it's more than enough to give me some perspective on where they are at when it comes to their financial position. Generally speaking, I will also go to cash flow statement to clarify whether the cash increase is coming from operating activities or did they sell or did they went capital raising to get that extra cash and then i will also look at the income statement to see whether they are investing efficiently to generate income but the balance sheet is one perspective and in future videos i'll cover the cash flow statements and the income statements as well so thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end I will have the cash flow statement and income statement video coming up very soon. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and click onto the bell so that when I release future videos, you'll be the first one to know. Until next time, my name is David. Otto will always do the honors and see you very, very soon.